I want to ask you, clearly President Trump has said there will be more tariffs because the EU is unfair when it comes to subs subsidies for companies. At this point, do you think the European Union needs to walk away from negotiations because of the trade tariffs and uh, threat of more maybe? So, hello, Ez. Uh, I was uh, really skeptical about uh, negotiating under pressure. And of course, we have uh, the pressure with the steel tariffs, the pressure with the threat on car tariffs, the investigation to uh, 3.2. And we made from the European side a lot of concessions, uh, more import on uh, LNG, on soya beans. We recognize soya beans as uh, sustainable and put it into biodiesel. So a lot of steps into the direction of the United States. And now Trump announced this additional tariffs on work for and other products. So it's, I think, not possible to negotiate under these circumstances. We should be really on a base of uh, cooperation, not on confrontation. So at this point, you think it's fair for the European Union to just walk out? There's no point in... No, not to work out, to, to talk, of course, but really start negotiation under these circumstances. I think that's not possible. We need also some concessions, some signals from the US side. And I understand those concessions that you would like to see from the US is to remove that threat of uh, tariffs while the talks are ongoing. That's of course, you... of course. We can talk about everything. I must myself spent a lot of my lifetime in the TTIP negotiations for a comprehensive trade agreement. Yeah, and of course we have a common interest, the United States and Europe, but we are partners and not uh, really competitors. And now that you mention a comprehensive agreement, uh, many times I talk to many officials who say ultimately this is not about the cars, it's not about Airbus, it's about the agriculture sector. This is what the Americans want to get into in Europe. Is that worth the price if that means we solve the current tensions? We had this agreement between Trump and, and Juncker last year and there was a clear exclusion of uh, agriculture products. In a comprehensive agreement, of course, everything is in, that's clear. But at the moment, to de-escalate the situation, we agreed on a limited uh, part of the game. But this limited part is also only possible if there is no sweat, sweat in the air. So agriculture, you don't see that as a possibility that could play into the talks? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. And I want to also talk about Germany because it's a country that clearly you know well. Uh, German experts have taken a hit. A lot of this has to do with trade tensions and the German cars. Is there a resolution to this in sight? Because we see a lot of pain in the expert sector and the automakers. When do you think we'll get a resolution to the uh, car standoff? I think it's not a specific German problem. We have a really European car industry a lot of value chain all around uh, the European Union and therefore we have to look to the working place all over uh, in the European Union. Uh, of course it's a sensible uh, area but in the end of the day we are really covering a lot of, uh, of sectors so uh, let's not focusing only on the car side. Uh, of course we are sensible but uh, the game is a little bit more bigger. And you know the European Parliament uh, very well. Uh, European leaders want to get on this negotiation with the US quickly, but you don't seem to agree on a mandate. When do we get a clear direction from the European Parliament and the institutions as to where do you want to take this? No, it's not a rejection of a mandate in, as such, but in the current form. So we have some conditions, put the sweat away, make clear what we want, the rules of origin, for, for example, uh, for us it's not except uh, uh, some rules of origin similar to the USMCA, the triple rules of origin that's not uh, acceptable or the quota inside the side letters. So we have to be a little bit more clearer what we want to achieve. And I want to talk to you about uh, China because that was the initial reason as to where we were here. A company like Huawei, they still want to get on the uh, 5G rollout. Do you think a company facing those allegations should have a say in the European rollout? We need really common standards, clear and transparent standards for all companies who want to be part of the game. And secondly, we, we need evidence that there is uh, no uh, hidden uh, mechanism in the system. And if we can prove that China uh, why is uh, acceptable, then they should have a, a chance, but uh, we have to prove it. So you don't see the security risk that the United States sees? We have no evidence at the moment. If there is real evidence, then of course they have to be excluded.